Everyone, on today's show, should you get the same amount of pay for working fewer hours? One country just made it official. We'll tell you where that is. Plus, I've got your stocks to watch as the markets reopen after that long Hamptons getaway weekend for Wall Street. Um, I've got a few hot stocks that I'll be trading this morning. We'll be doing that live, and I'll show you what those are. Plus, Bitcoin, ready for a major move. It's, in fact, it's already happening as we're starting the show this morning. Are you ready for the big crypto move that we're about to see? We'll get to that. And even though Congress is on vacation, we have some big stimulus updates for you. That's right. Congress is on vacation once again because they've been working so hard. Morning Invest starts right now. Welcome to Morning Invest. I'm Clayton Morris. This is the show that helps you make money. We're live every morning right here at 9 a.m. Eastern Time. It's good to be back. Um, David is back from vacation. Um, you were stuck Finally. in the woods. Dude, you, you, went, you, you only drove like you went an hour away. Got to see your shot, by the way, you, unless you have the cameras off. You went like an hour away, but it took you five hours to get there. Yeah. So, no, I, I went two, about two and a half hours away, but going into the national parks for like we wanted to go see this, uh, the rainforest and everything. It was five hours to go 11 miles. And then once we got to that 11 miles, then it took us about another hour to get to the destination driving through the park. So they were doing one in, one out. So any, every car that went in, a car got uh, came out, a car got to go in. And it just reminded me, I'm not sure what possessed me to think that it was a good idea to travel on 4th of July weekend, but I will never do that again. <laughs> Yeah, it's well, you know, and, and then we broke records, by the way. I mean, you saw the numbers, right? We broke records to pre pandemic levels. The TSA says they screened, I mean, it was up uh, like 3 million more people than they did at this time in 2019. So they broke all kinds of records. People are just like, we wow. got to get out. I got to get out of there. And I will so. say this, though, once I got past all that, it was beautiful. Like, I got some beautiful pictures saw you know just like some of the most beautiful landscapes i've ever seen and the rainforest was actually really cool because you got like these big pine trees that are just like like the the size of my room were the trunks and then they'd go up like 200 feet and had moss all over them so there's like these canopies of moss and everything it was just really neat beautiful yeah nice you have to share some photos with us on the show oh yeah Sweet, sweet. So today we're starting our new format. So you'll have your news show for the first half hour. And then right before the markets open, we're going to be jumping over to the trading desk, which is uh, kind of up up the stairs over there in the spire. So we'll be doing the, the live trading desk. I've got a couple of uh, different markets that we're looking at this morning, a bunch of different stocks that I'm going to be trading today. And uh, these, you know, these are stocks that I day trade. These are stocks that I, I do right after the show, typically, and I will be trading these live. And we're going to do that every morning. So you can jump in and join us and learn how to do that. Or, hey, if you've got your news and you're done with the news portion of the show, you can say, i got to get back to work. I'm off for the rest of the day. So totally up to you. But then we're going to be live. I'm going to be live in there for multiple hours. David will stick around for a little while, but I'm going to be there for hours answering questions. And that's the goal. I figured we, we'll, we'll, give, we'll try this out for the summer. We'll see how it goes, right? I guess that's the idea. So we will talk about that. Um, but hey, we uh, I want to talk about the markets this morning. Um, let's start with the markets, shall we? Because we had some pretty interesting news overnight. Do you know Weibo? Uh, do you use Weibo? It's like what the the Chinese equivalent of Twitter, I guess, right? Is how you would describe Weibo. I don't know if um, I don't know if you're muted or something, David. But I don't know if I can hear. <clears throat> or did you disappear? There we there go. go. There you go. Yeah, no, I I don't use it, and I I I'm very selective on the apps that go on my phone. So, <laughs> well, I'm I'm surprised you're not using a, a Chinese social media company on your phone. That's odd. But hey, just like early morning, just before the show started, there was news that they were going to take themselves private. So uh, that the company was going to go private because of what's going on in China right now. This clamp down on tech companies in China and stocks spiked i mean huge spike and then weibo came out and said no no this news is not true that's not us we never said that <laughs> so all these people early morning trading made tons of money with this fake news and then it went back to where it is normally so we saw weibo just a few minutes ago we also got this bit of news um as we look at some of the markets this morning we got this bit of news from amc uh as ceo um adam aaron this just breaking um just about an hour ago so he, you know, we were wondering if this was going to happen. Remember, AMC was going to roll out a number of additional shares and uh, authorize 25 million more AMC shares. 
Uh, and shareholders said no. I mean, all the AMC apes, you know, ape nation said, no, we don't want that. We absolutely don't want that. Well, he tweets this morning, says, it's no secret that I think shareholders should authorize 25 million more AMC shares, but what, what you think is more important to us? Many yes, many no. AMC does not want to proceed with such a split, so we're canceling the July vote on more shares. No more such requests in 2021. So they're tabling that. So big news for AMC. That's one of the uh, that's one of the stocks I'll be watching this morning, um, as we go into the trading session this morning. Um, here are a couple of other things I'm gonna be looking at today is Bitcoin. So let's take a look at where Bitcoin is right now. Bitcoin popping up a little bit here, thirty four thousand. It was down around thirty three this morning, and we you know we, we put in a lower high right now. So this is that yellow line support. We've got to see Bitcoin break this, or we could be heading to twenty six thousand dollar range. And then, we're, but also right now, we're seeing a lot of whales buying up Bitcoin, a lot of big long positions being put in on Bitcoin. So this could be the bottom. And we could be about to see a major Bitcoin bounce in the next few days uh, or even, you know, at, even towards the weekend. Um, but you're seeing a lot of big institutional investors, big whales buying up long positions in Bitcoin right now. So this could be the bottom. This could be the spot where now we start to see a huge swing to the north. Um, and we're already starting to see some of that this morning um, as this news sorts of starts to break around the world that a lot of these whales have been taking long positions. So that's good. That's good news for ETH. Uh, that's good news for Ethereum as well, which is forming a bit of a cup and handle pattern right now, which is good news there. Doge also uh, just chilling out down that 23 cents. <laughs> I don't know what Doge has been doing. Cardano this morning up also a little bit to that $1.44 range. It had been around $1.25, $1.23. 22. So our, you know, everything is kind of hinging on what Bitcoin does this morning. Uh, here are a couple of stocks though I'm looking at for my Tuesday trades, which we'll be doing live. I'm looking right now at MRIN. This has a lot of uh, volume at this hour. This is what I look for. I want to see some good volume. I also want to see uh, the, the blast price be above $10. Uh, I want to see some, some volatility. I want to see some catalysts. I want to see some movement. Uh, so MRIN, I've been trading this stock over the past few days. This is at the top of my list right now. And Newegg, do you like Newegg? David, do you order a lot of stuff on Newegg? Uh, my whole PC build, I, I got off of Newegg pretty much. So yeah, I use it once in a while. So Newegg also this morning with a uh, nice percent, I mean, almost 10% um, in, in, in uh, pre-market trading here. So and uh, above $10, about $19. So I'm also watching Newegg. So I'll be watching those along with AMC this morning to see what this news does from uh, CEO Adam Aaron uh, on AMC. Be watching that as well. And of course, if you've been watching what's going on with the space race, Jeff Bezos is out and his final day at Amazon was yesterday. Um, we're we're uh, you're seeing the new CEO come in on 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 Amazon. You're seeing Richard Branson. Did you see this? Richard Branson basically one upped. Uh, is trying to one up Bezos. I mean, he's gonna, he's trying to, he's, I get the, the launch is now set for him to go to space like a few days ahead of Bezos. Well, you heard like him, didn't he? He doesn't even know who Bezos is. <laughs> I love Branson. You know, there's that huge petition, right? To keep Brand, uh, to keep Jeff Bezos in space when he goes. I mean, almost <laughs> a like there's hundreds of thousands of people that have now signed this petition to keep Bezos in space when he goes to space. <laughs> I love that. Do you do you think it actually bother, bothers a person like that? Do you think he's narcissistic enough that it doesn't even bother him to know that that many people despise him? I mean, yeah, that's got to be troubling, right? If you think that many people, you know that that many people can't stand you. I don't know. I mean... I mean, I know some people in the media business who have a lot of haters and they don't care. I mean, think about like, you know, people like Rush Limbaugh. He never cared that there was haters. He thrived off of it, right? I, I don't yeah. know. I think it would bother but I, me. But I, I guess that's a little bit different because he's, he's kind of out there in the public, whereas <clears throat> Bezos is kind of a behind the scenes kind of guy. You don't really see him much. You know, I just wonder like, because you think about like going and, and reading the YouTube comments sometimes. I mean, it can affect you. And to have a hundred thousand signatures wanting you to stay in space that they don't like you that much. I mean, right. that's got to sting a little bit. Yeah. Like someone actually went to change.org and created a petition to keep you in outer space. I think that's a, <laughs> yeah, that, that would probably bother me. Um, we're going to get to our top story in a moment and that is oil. But first I want to tell you about our friends today over at Blue Chew. Again, you know, you don't have, you don't have to be embarrassed about it. You know, if you if you don't feel that confidence, 
in the you know in the bedroom hey give it a try blue chew is a unique online service that delivers the same active ingredients as viagra and cialis but in chewable tablets and at a fraction of the cost now they are a repeat sponsor on our show you know why because many of you guys out there have taken action and ordered blue chew so they said we 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 like morning invest we'll, we'll be, we're going to be back to support morning invest so we want you to support them the best part is it's all done online no visits to the doctor's office, no awkward conversations, no waiting in the line at the pharmacy. Blue Chew's tablets are made in the United States, prepared and shipped direct to your door in discreet packaging. So if you could benefit from a little extra confidence, Blue Chew can help. And we've got a special deal for our listeners. Try Blue Chew for free when you use our promo code INVEST at checkout. Just pay $5 shipping. It's bluechew.com, promo code INVEST to receive your first month free. Visit bluechew.com for more details and important safety information. And we thank Blue Chew for sponsoring this podcast. Thank you so much, Blue Chew. Really, really great uh, company. And I love their sense of humor. So thank you for the support of the show. All right, let's get to our top story this morning, which is oil. Oil industry hanging on its hat over this trade agreement right now. Everything in all eyes on what's going on with OPEC this morning. And it's not good. I mean, you're seeing gas prices right now going up. I'd love to hear again. We've been hearing different gas prices. It's about to go even higher. The oil industry was hanging its hat on this trade agreement, but in this negotiation yesterday, it all fell apart um, it, between the United Arab Emirates and Saudi Arabia. And by the way, I do have still a little bit of a head cold. So if you hear my throat scratchy, I apologize. It's been a little hard for me to talk today. And so many of you said, hey, get, let's get some lemon in your water. And that's what I've got here. So <clears throat> I apologize. Anyway, prices, oil prices could be up, could be hitting $100 a barrel, according to some analysts right now. It's about $76, almost $77. They're expected to keep pushing higher if producers don't get their output to meet greater demand right now. I mean, these guys were crushing it, making so much oil, and then they were giving it away during the pandemic. And now they pulled back on their production. So they're sitting back and not producing enough. And that's why you're paying more for oil. I mean, these guys manipulate these markets. It's amazing. I mean, OPEC is a trade group that sets all these oil prices and they have trade rules. There have been disagreements between Saudi Arabia and the UAE in the group causing a lot of discord right now. They're usually friends. But the lack of but, a deal is causing huge spike in prices. But we were told it was because of the, the hack. Oh, right. <laughs> right. <laughs> but the oil, well, colonial pipeline, right? So how can we keep these prices artificially high? And by the way, you know, I know you and I are being a little cynical here, but if you think about it, like the United Arab Emirates, Saudi Arabia, the Middle Eastern countries, they don't want oil prices low. I mean, this is their entire economy. Like they rely on oil. Iran and Saudi Arabia, it's a, it's a kingdom fueled by oil prices. They don't want uh, down to $50 a barrel. They want it at $100 a barrel. They would love it to be that high. So but I can thought build, we were oil independent rate. now. Right. Well, no, we can't do that. We can't be oil independent. Although we heard that under Trump, right? We're, we're totally oil independent. We're, we're, we, don't, we don't rely on the Middle East anymore. Oh, okay. Hmm. Hmm. But this is OPEC, right? I this mean, they OPEC got an infrastructure driving. bill to pay for, so they got to figure out how to inflate something. So let's, yeah, let's, and by the way, this will hit consume. This is why this is our top story, because again, this hits all of you. This hits all of us right in the bank, right in the piggy bank, right? Right in the wallet. Gas prices. <clears throat> and so we can't raise rates. We can't raise tax rates on, on the wealthy, but we can certainly, you know, make sure that you're still paying way more for oil and gas. It affects all of these companies. And it's not just gasoline prices. Obviously it's crude oil. It's oil prices for companies. It's, I mean, shipping um, on, on, you know, on boats. I mean, it's everything. Diesel prices, everything. So it's back to the drawing board. If a deal is reached, it's going to help release millions of barrels of crude oil to help meet in, increased demand. But until then, you're going to be paying more at the pump. So get ready for that. Not a surprise. I mean, I'm curious in the chat, like, what are you guys paying? I, I, let's see if we have a competition right now. Everyone in the chat, tell me the gas prices in your neck of the woods. And the thing is, people know their gas prices. Right, everyone who's watching right now, you know, like down to the penny, like what it is. Let's see in the chat who has the highest gas price on our show right now. We're Mine just went to one. three three forty nine down at my low. It was three uh, three nineteen before the hack. Then it went to three twenty nine during the the hack, and then after that, now it's stuck at three thirty nine. 
Yeah. 299. Philip. Whoa. Philip Rucker said, was it uh, Jose meets money? 445. What are you in Hawaii? Um, Kristen Swenson, 348 in Denton, Texas. <clears throat> 439. Pauletta. Where are you, Pauletta? 469. Jeez, wow. Jeez Louise. Patrick says, nice mug. Thank you. David didn't even comment on it. Yeah, I was waiting to see how how long it would take you to. I did. I said. I saw. I said. Whoa! I want that mug. You didn't hear me. Oh, oh that I must have been you. when my audio was off. Oh, 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 I was gonna steal that from you. That's a badass mug. Oh, I'm digging it. This is the way. <laughs> this is the only way I drink. Four twenty-five in Los Angeles. Wow. Four yeah, in California. Over four bucks there in California. Three eighty-nine, <clears throat> Molly. Portland, 490 Orange. Orange County, California. Well, keep them coming. I want to keep the see, see if you can grab and keep your eye on the prices here, and then we'll put up on the screen whoever has the, the, the highest, if we can get the highest here. But I got another story to get to, which is the stimulus. Um, the Problem Solvers Caucus. You know those guys, the people that solve problems. <laughs> the Problem Solvers Caucus. They voted to endorse the Senate's bipartisan infrastructure deal and is urging the leadership to schedule an expeditious standalone vote in the House of Representatives. You have Gottheimer there, the guy from New Jersey, Representative Gottheimer, <clears throat> who pretends to be a Democrat. And Brian Fitzpatrick, he's a Republican yeah, from Pennsylvania. They have a 58-member Problem Solvers Caucus. And their endorsement is interesting, but the House probably won't vote on a bipartisan bill without a vote on a larger reconciliation package. So we're going to have to see how... This will impact the group's endorsement of a larger package. Furthermore, we remain totally skeptical that a large number of Republicans will vote for the bipartisan bill if the GOP leadership is opposed to it, meaning House Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy. He's been totally sort of circumspect on his opposition to the legislation. He hasn't really talked much about it. But he and other Republicans are expected to ultimately oppose this whole thing. Now, you have this Problem Solvers Caucus, which has worked closely with Senate Bipartisan Group as they worked on this $1.2 trillion package. Gottheimer and Fitzpatrick, they sit in on some of those Senate meetings and some of that G10 group that came up with the deal. They brief the Problem Solvers Caucus on this package, but we still don't have any movement. Congress is on vacation right now. I love this. The Congress is on vacation. They're not back. They're, I don't know when they're back. I think like next week. Then when they come back, they, they have like a few weeks and then they're off for the entire month of August because these guys deserve a break, right? I mean, these guys work so hard. Hey, they deserve you know, the whole month of August, you know? We, we called it. I mean, we were saying it probably wouldn't be till September till any infrastructure was even done, you know? On the, so it, we probably won't see anything until September. That they're they're going to hem-haw around. I mean, the, mm -hmm. this, is the, this is the true definition of, of filibustering. I always say that right now because like this is that's all they're doing. They're just making little arguments to, to where are we going to pay for it and all this other stuff. Meanwhile, the war budget's continuing to grow. They're still passing stuff for their buddies. That that's passes instantly. Yeah. Yeah, we can get these defense contracts done. We can get all that lined up and done in two afternoons, and we're done. We don't have to worry about it. But these guys, you know, these guys want to get an infrastructure package through for the American people, do anything meaning, meaningful for you. Can't do it. Can't do it. Uh, but we do have some movement. Here's a story I want to get to this morning, and I'm really disgusted by this. <laughs> I'd love to see what your thoughts are on this. It's Afghanistan. By the way, let me check in on the gas prices here. <clears throat> uh, Kristen says, I look so happy like a kid with my mug. I am. I would my son agree. Wanted, my son wanted to, uh, he wanted to use it first day. I'm like, nobody. I got to use it first. I got to try this thing. He got a little Mickey Mouse mug that he loved. 10 minutes until the market opens. We're going to see some movement here on, uh, on AMC. Um, so we'll get there in a moment. I want to get to this story, though, which is Af Afghanistan. <clears throat> so the U.S. left Afghanistan, uh, at least part of it. The Bagram Air Base. Think about this. The United States has been at the Bagram Air Base for over 20 years. And guess what they did last night? Um, or about 24 hours ago. They shut off the electricity and they snuck out in the middle of the night with not, without telling anybody. They didn't tell the new base's Afghan commander. They didn't even give the Afghan commander who was taking over any information that we were leaving. 
The AP is reporting from Bagram Air Base. They turn off the electricity and they abandon everything. They snuck out in the middle of the night. And guess what? They left tons of crap. And I'm not kidding. Three million things they left behind. In fact, so much so that one guy just swooped in and stole everything. He stole a bunch of stuff. This is a guy literally who went in, grabbed up a bunch of stuff that was left behind at Bagram Air Base. Look, basketballs and well, stereos have you, and gas masks. Have you ever seen videos of ISIS driving through towns and stuff? They're using our gear. So we just basically left all that gear for, you know, whoever, whoever we're going to call our next enemy. Hey, they went in and stole our stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Literally tanks. We left behind tanks. The new commander went in. He says he discovered the Americans' departure more than two hours after they left. The commander said they left behind 3.5 million things. Everything was all itemized by the departing U.S. military, including tens of thousands of bottles of water, energy drinks, meals ready to eat. They left them all behind. Imagine donating or giving that food that you're just leaving behind to people that need it. Like how many people do you, that are hungry around the world? You just left it all laying there. I always thought it was funny, not funny, but, um, you know, whenever I would see videos they were showing on the news of ISIS walking and they had their white gowns on and they all had on like U.S. Army boots. <laughs> yeah, it's like, exactly. what's up with that? <laughs> Look at this. I mean, they literally left behind like tanks, armored vehicles, thousands of civilian vehicles, and they took the keys to them. So they left them behind and they took the keys and they left armored vehicles that we pay for as taxpayers and they just left them behind and got out of there. Oh, America. I love you, America. Unbelievable. And you wonder, and we can't get stimulus for the American people. And yet we can literally leave behind 3.5 million things, including tons of armored vehicles, cars, you name it, and just leave in the middle of the night. Well, and think about that. Think about the prices of those things. That's, that's going to be in the up, upper billions of dollars. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, for sure. Absolutely. Unbelievable. Uh, here's another story I'm following, which is Iceland. You know, I'm a big fan of the Iceland, right? Well, guess what? Iceland has achieved the holy grail for working people. They have just approved giving you, giving workers same pay, the exact same pay to work shorter hours. That's right. And they tested this for a while, right? Results from two big trials that they did and testing this of reduced hours showed no productivity loss whatsoever and no decline in service levels. But the employees reported way less stress, an improved work-life balance, and all of this was conducted in the United Kingdom, by the way, not even in Iceland, like by some partial, you know, like some partial biased company. It was in the UK. And it, they found out that Iceland's Association for Sustainable Democracy, that these things work achieving shorter hours with sustained pro sustained productivity and service levels involved rethinking how tasks were completed according to the report this included shortening meetings instead of wasting people's time or replacing them with emails cutting out unnecessary tasks rearranging shifts to make life better they did these studies from 2015 to 2019 this was not a short study they cut hours they took about five hours off the week so it's not so huge. what were they working were they working 40 hours like we do? 40 hours a week. So they cut it down to 35, and they no reduction in paychecks. None. They looked at 2,500 workers. It's more than 1% of the whole country's working population. They said that their well-being dramatically increased, and 86% of Iceland's entire working population have either moved to shorter hours or can negotiate now to do so. And now they're looking at this in Finland, and they're looking at, and they're talking about doing a four hour work week in Finland. And other companies, you know, Japan is also looking at that and looking at other countries that are saying, you know, what, what we found is, wow, people are a lot happier. They're less stressed. Our productivity is better. We're doing just fine. And we don't actually don't need, we don't need to, we don't need to worry about this anymore. I love this. Love this. There's also a new term this morning called boomerang workers. Have you heard about this? This is, uh, <clears throat> I've never heard of this term. Do you know what boomerang workers are? Well, never heard of it, huh? There are people who return to their hometowns to do remote work. I know a lot of people that did this. They're just like, I'm going back to where my parents are. You know, they just went, they moved back home basically. And they're sticking around. They're staying in their old hometowns now. 
according to these reports, um, basically saying that workers used to move where the jobs are. Now they're just moving home. They're moving back where they have roots, where they can raise their kids in familiar areas. They can escape the big city life. They can take jobs with them. And actually some companies now or some cities are actually encouraging you to move to the particular city. They're going to give you like a $10,000 bonus. People are leaving San Francisco, Seattle, New York, and they're moving back to these, these small towns. Um, in Tulsa, Oklahoma, a program called Tulsa Remote offers people $10,000 to move to the city to work remotely. Would you take that? I mean, 10, so move to Tulsa, quiet, small town, you, may, you know, great, actually great property values in Tulsa, really good property values. And we're going to pay you $10,000. You can live in Tulsa. They get the tax revenue from you moving there. And then you can just remotely work in San Francisco. Like if that's where your job is, I think it's smart. Know, if San Francisco that. would allow you to work in one of those states. Yeah, that's the thing. Well, well, the problem is that a lot of those cities like New York City, even if you're like, if, you're, if your company is, this is the ridiculous thing about New York City, is that even if your city, New York City, like that's where your main home office is, and you decide to live in Tulsa, you still pay a New York City working tax. It's ridiculous. Even if you live in New Jersey, but you just commute and you work in New York City, you still have to pay, like, it's like a ridiculous, it's like 2 or 3% tax just to work in Manhattan. No wonder everyone's leaving, getting out of there. I don't blame them. Hey, the market's about to open here in a minute. I want to tell you about our second and final sponsor of the day. You got to check these guys out because their clothing is fantastic. It is Everlane. They've got perfect stuff for summer. Hey, back to school stuff. I know we don't want to think about that right now, but you know, it's time is of the essence to get some great deals. I love their t-shirts, their loungewear, super comfortable. I love a good t-shirt, one that doesn't shrink, that doesn't like, you know, break down. Everlane, uh, they have you know, small warm weather pleasures that, you know, I love a good t-shirt, right? Just sit and have a nice iced cup of coffee with a, whatever. You know, wearing a classic white T-shirt. I wore it when I was in France the other day um, on traveling, on vacation. You know, just wearing my nice classic white T-shirt. It's nice and hot. And I wasn't hot. I wasn't sweating. Um, just that great, comfortable T-shirt. Everlane has made quality clothing with ethical factories and radically transparent pricing since 2010. They do extensive research and vetting to use ethical factories. They provide fair wages, reasonable hours to the skilled people who craft their clothing. Um, and the clothing is just made super nice and I mean, really, really great from the time you, uh, the, the time that you wash it over and over and over again, just beautiful stuff from workout to takeout, swimwear to track wear styles for lounging at home or hitting up your favorite late night spot. The breathable organic cotton wear track wear gives an elevated take on a tried and true basic. And you can get a head start on your summer right now with your look with Everlane's sustainable swimwear collection, which is made from 13,000 pounds of recycled plastic, by the way. So a really, really great company. So go to everlane.com slash invest and sign up right now to get 10% off your first order plus free shipping. And they accept returns within 30 days of the ship date. So you can check them out too. Again, they get easy returns within 30 days of your ship date. That's 10% off your first order when you go to everlane.com slash invest and you sign up. All right, the market's about to open here. I want to jump over to the trading desk. I want to thank everyone for joining us today. This is the news portion of the program. Don't forget to subscribe to our daily newsletter. Just go to morninginvest.com and hit that subscribe button. Put in your email address. You'll have a newsletter delivered to your inbox first thing in the morning. We cover the news that I think you can use first thing in the morning. Now we're going to jump over to the trading desk, do some live trading for the rest of the day. Um, some stocks that I'm watching again, M-R-I-N at this hour. New egg. And AMC, those are sort of tops on my charts. Uh, I'm also uh, keeping my eye on Wish and a couple of others, but these are the tops on my charts today. So we're gonna jump over the trading desk now. And uh, we'll be over there in a second.
All right, all right, all right. Hopefully you guys can hear me okay. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Um, you got a lot of static in your microphone. Now there's now there's no audio. Bring it bring your microphone in again. See if this is any better here. Okay, you guys can hear me okay. Why is my screen not sharing now? screen isn't being able to be shared there could be an issue with uh, I'm gonna close this browser out because it might be restream Stephen Hall we did we did practice. It just, this stuff happens. So you guys just be patient. We'll be right back. Um, we'll get it figured out. Yeah, streaming is hard, especially when you try to do um, stuff like this. So we're trying to actually, we're trying to bring in two productions. So one production is in the main studio and then one production is in a different location. So we're trying to uh, bring those both in from different places. So we'll get it. Just be patient.
Okay, sorry about that, guys. We tried the um, we tried the other studio setup, and it's just not uh, not good. So, especially doing dealing with multi location stuff um, was a super pain for me. So, okay. Everything okay now, David? I don't know if David's still here. But, uh, yeah, I'm still here. Okay. All right, let's get into this then. All right, so <clears throat> AMC, we saw, like just as I expected, a little a market pop open there on AMC. All right, so let's see. And are you able to keep the chat up here? Yeah. Okay. We'll just let the chat run, right? So I use I use Weeble as well as TradingView. So I do my trading with Weeble, where you can get uh, where you can get two free stocks. Actually, they're doing a big promotion right now, whether uh, for the month of Ju July to celebrate their anniversary. Um, so you can uh, you can get two free stocks right now, but they're, they're giving it the way one free stock just for opening the account and they're giving it away. So you're able to do fractional shares right now at Weeble. So just go to morninginvest.com slash Weeble. So you can buy, you don't have to buy full shares of a stock. In the Weeble desktop app, I need to switch over here back to trading view. All right. And I'm not sure why I'm not hearing this. Let's try it. Drunk Mom Gaming just became a member today so she could say, let's do it live. <laughs> F it. That's awesome. is doing this. Okay, so we're watching AMC right now. M M R I N dump down early as well. M R I N right now is pretty choppy. I made some good money on M R I N. Over the past few days, I need to find my other, I'm not sure what's going on with my ear, but I'll be right back.
it says it's connected to my earpod. Now just hit play. What what is it you're trying to play? No, I just I'm good. I failed. Okay. Figured it out. Finally figured it out here. Pain in the butt. Okay, guys. All right, let's do some trading. So overall, right now the market's still kind of weak. So looking at Tesla. Keeping our eye on Tesla right now, possibly a double bottom here on Tesla. Wow, Tesla is dumping. <clears throat> MRIN is also getting dumped right now. Twenty three sixty five was the pre market low on. Uh, Six sixty was the pre market low on Tesla, so this could be a good bounce play here. And I am pretty long biased. Um, yeah, everything's like dumping at the moment. See SQBG as well. All right, so M R I N. Whoa. Dumping big time. I'm waiting for a bounce play here. It bounced at 25, but really not enough volume. Like if you're shorting, if you're shorting uh, MRIN, I'm much more long biased. So MRIN might be a good time for me to jump in. So I'm I'm personally I'm buying in on this right now. So this 2298, 22. So this is, I mean, right around the pre-market low. Just waiting here to see if we get this wick back. So I'm buying. Uh, man. Glad I didn't buy just yet. So MRIN still dumping. There's no shorts to squeeze right now. So it's not bouncing. So it's just hovering right now. So they're basically, there's just not enough short participation. Yeah, that's trading view, Hashim. BS, BSQR. Yeah, that's another one that was on my radar. So MRIN, well, here we're getting a little bit of a bounce here, but the volume is pretty low. Just a little bounce. There's a little bounce, nothing much. <clears throat> really tiny bounce. B S Q R. Here's B S Q R.
is there anybody? Uh, let me guys know in the chat. Let me uh, let me know in the chat, guys, if uh, if there's any news on Tesla at the moment, or is it just going down because the rest of the the market is tanking right now? I mean, you have a, you know, we're seeing some pretty pretty big pretty big dumps right now. DD, of course, sinking twenty four percent at the open. Who would think leaving tanks in the Middle East would cause the market to crash? <laughs> Exactly. Tesla just keeps, wow, can't even get a little bounce there. There's been no big green candles here on on Tesla. It's been 20 minutes since the market opened. Nothing. Nothing on Tesla right now. <clears throat> How many of you guys in uh Someone said they said a, a super chat. I haven't seen any super chats come through. No, I'm talking to them right now. They haven't they haven't come through, so YouTube isn't processing them. Oh, I see. MRIN just weak right now. Do you have are are usernames on Weeble shareable? Like, do they have some kind of social aspect of them too? Weeble, no. Uh, but uh, on on public public, you can. Because um, Elon was asking what your Weeble username was, but I don't think that matters. Yeah, you can't that's go not watch. a. Yeah, that's not. But on Trading View, like I'm just Clayton Morris on Trading View. <clears throat> but I think you can share you can share stuff on Trading View. I don't really do that because I could publish this stuff like charts that I'm marking up. But I'm not really marking up any charts right now. I'm just watching. Um, I pay for a, a higher uh, level on Trading View. Look at this on Tesla. Look at Tesla right now. All red candles right now. Um. I mean. This is crazy. And I can't wait to have my larger screen. I'll tell you what. <laughs> yeah, because one of the reasons I wanted to be in the other studio, guys, is so I have my big screen so I can, you know, and then have the screen here you guys can see. But... Six fifty seven is a gap fill on Tesla, and look at this right now. It should bounce finally. So finally, I'm, I'm I'm buying some Tesla right now. So I'm I'm buying some Tesla right now. I'm waiting for this bounce because it should bounce off this six fifty seven here. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Braden okay. says you can follow people on Weeble. Well, can you? I never do that, so that's good to know. I think I just, I don't even know what my username, I just have like a generic number. I don't know. Tyler says, no big news on Tesla. So, I mean, here's, are we going to get a little bounce here? I. Kristen said this from four days ago, Elon Musk praises China's economic success on Communist Party anniversary, plus the Tesla car explosion. Yeah, four days ago. I mean... The only thing, the only thing I can think is it's you know just China related. I mean, I, I don't know, but it just could be. 
here we go. So we're getting a little bit of a bounce here on, on Tesla. Let's see if we can... Here's a little bounce. Okay. <clears throat> I'm holding on. I'm long on Tesla here at the moment. Let's see what happens. So they're just trying to smoke some of these shorts out of the game here a little bit. Because you had a lot of people jumping in to short this. So we're seeing a little bit of... There we go. So I'm just taking a little bit. I have like cups of water just randomly <clears throat> scattered around my office. <laughs> like, oh, here's one that I haven't. Let's grab this one. <sighs> hey, I guess this weekend we can see Black Widow. Isn't Black Widow coming out? Yeah, I think isn't it already out on Disney Plus? I thought I, I read think it that comes it out this weekend, isn't it? Gotcha. All right. <clears throat> Man, weak action on Tesla. Jeez. Oh. All right, M-R-I-N, where are we at? Grind back. There's really not a convincing Bounce here on Tesla. We have not seen a full green candle yet. I mean, look at this. Still, it's very weak. Very weak. Very weak. <clears throat> here we go. Here we go. We might get this double bottom here. Let's go. Come on. It's trying, trying to double bottom. Here we go. Here we go, here we go, okay. Come on, Tesla, let's move it, let's move it. Looks like Black Widow comes out Friday. Oh, nice. Yeah, I'm excited about it. Yeah, I still feel she should have had her movie well before Captain Marvel and Black Panther. Yeah, for sure. And I, I've said years ago, I said I would love for her to do like a James Bourne style, like spy movie, you know? Yeah, you mean Jason Bourne and Jason James Bourne. Bond. <laughs> what did I say? James Bourne? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's. I want to come up with a character. James Bourne. I know a scriptwriter, Michael Scott, who's looking for work right now. Michael Scott. He's a <coughs> James Bourne is a he, he's a former MI6 agent, but he doesn't remember. <laughs> <laughs> he knows that he likes martinis, but he doesn't know why he likes them. <laughs> All right, here we go. A little bit on Tesla. Weak action, though. Weak action. Uh, really weak. I mean, I, I'm in it like six. I'm in six fifty eight here. My average price six fifty eight. So here we go. All right, here we go. My the target is six sixty six, which is the previous low. So right here, here's the here's the here's the target on Tesla, right here six sixty six, which is the previous low. All right, here we go. Here we go on Tesla. 
J Jason's lesser known brother, Kelly says. That's right. James Bourne <laughs> and Michael Scorn. He loves his, John says, he loves his green apple martinis. <laughs> he's like that, he's like the cheesy Captain America in the new, uh, in, in the, in the Winter Soldier Falcon series. With the funky jaw. <clears throat> He has a receipt for a tux, but he can't find it. He knows he bought one. <laughs> he doesn't know how to talk to the ladies. <laughs> this is a really good setup on Tesla, fin finally. Hey, uh, Alan, Weeble equals liars. They said an ACH deposit would be automatic. It's not available for me to trade. Do you, did you just set it up because there might be a time, like a verification process for your first deposit or something, and then after that it might be more instant, I would think? Yeah, when did you set it up also? Because like if the markets were closed, banks were closed yesterday and, and, and all of that, so... All right, so Tesla just grinding up here. Again, my target is 666. So SPY. Um, yeah, SPY is not helping things right now. That's why Tesla is just grinding here because of spy. Um, yeah, see, when you're looking at spy, SPY, <clears throat> you can see the action here on Tesla. There was some employment data that just came out from spy. That's that's the issue here. So MRIN, I was watching it. The volume, the volume was strong, but the volume is now abysmal. So I'm I'm taking MRIN off my list today. Um, <clears throat> so I'm sketching out on MRIN. Beelin, Beelin also is waiting for that stop hunt or possibly grinding higher here. I, I made some good money on Beelin last or two weeks ago. All right, here we go, Tesla. Let's go, Tesla. I think we're starting to pop close to 666. All right, here we go. <coughs> here we go. So I bought in again. I bought in at 658 on Tesla. The target is 666, that previous low. And we might get our 666. Here we go, here we go. And I'm gonna I'm gonna sell out of this. And I'll take profits here. See if spy is dumping. So if spy is dumping, that could be bad for well, a little bit back here on SPY. All right, come on, Tesla. See, drop back down to 662. The, sp the spy weakness is really killing this trade right now. <clears throat> right here, here's spy. Yeah. 
it could be <clears throat> could be somebody like Ark Invest or somebody like selling right now, selling Tesla, and that's why it's moving down. <clears throat> so again, that's you know, all these things are tied together, right? Still holding on here. It was at 663. It's like I'm going to hold on to this stock as long as it stays above 660. If it drops below 660, I am uh I'm on uh I'm going to oh, well, I'm going to dump it if it's <clears throat> if it drops below that. Six sixty one, six sixty one. So this is not good on Tesla. Again, our target is six sixty six. But you know, if you're just tuning in, the reason we're having ah, here we go. <clears throat> it's spy. Look at spy. Because spy is dumping. Tesla's dumping. And their employment data. <clears throat> well, here we go. All right, coming back a little bit here. Let me check on space. Look at space. Space just went crazy. Last week while I was on vacation, I uh, traded space. Th this one was sketchy as create like last week, last week on uh, Virgin Galactic space. <clears throat> It was sketchy as crazy. I, I traded it towards the end of the day on one trading day, made a lot of money. But look at this, taken off. Space. <clears throat> you know, I'd say an entry point on space right now is this this previous low here on a bounce. So if space drops down here, So that's it. <clears throat> I just don't see, uh, I don't see an entry yet on, on space. See, this is where people get burned too. Like you jump in on space, you FOMO right now. Don't FOMO, you know? Like, ooh, I'm gonna jump into space right now. It's taking off, like, it's whoa. So you then you then you buy in right here. That's exactly what, you know, institutional, that's what, that's what the big uh, Wall Street firms want you to do. Because then think, what they'll do is they'll squeeze you out right here. They'll squeeze you out and you'll freak out. Do you think that the space stock will go down if Bezos gets stuck there? <laughs> well, if well, I don't know. Space, because space is Branson's company. So if Bezos gets stuck in space, I don't know. Maybe space, then Branson's goes up. Because it, you know, now it's like all on his back, right? Yeah, because he won. Yeah. Here we go. So, the, you know. Although I think what they're saying is Branson is not technically going into space. He's not passing that line into actual like space orbit or whatever where Bezos is. So if you go by that, it technically looks like Bezos will will actually go to space where Branson is just because I guess his galactic ship doesn't go above the line that's that's technically space. Yeah, I get. I mean, look, I get. Well, I know there was some controversy on the Mercury Two rocket. I mean, you know, so I don't know. 
It's like, is it really space? I guess if you're out there and you can't breathe when you open the door, to me, that's space. <laughs> you know, like if you open the door and you get sucked out into the, then you're in space. You ever to me, that anything movie, higher think... than anything higher than Mount Everest, I guess, is space, right? Did you ever watch that movie First Man? I think it's called with Ryan Gosling. No. Oh it's man, good. yeah, it's it's really good because it kind of gives you a perspective of of what, uh, what it was like to go in the like up into that that line where you're just entering space orbits where you lose the the gravity and all that stuff, and yeah, it's pretty cool. Hmm. Sounds cool. I still haven't seen Interstellar. <clears throat> oh, wow. Dude. I know, I know. All right, we're ending the stream so Clayton can watch Interstellar, you guys. Thank you so much for... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> That's a pretty good movie. Yeah. Hans Zimmer score, too. Yeah. Yeah, you got Q, Q's up. And then you have Spy down. So if Q and Spy both would have been down, Tesla, so that's why Tesla's caught in between these two right now. See this? This is interesting to look at. So you've got these big, you know, ETFs, right? And you've got Spy, some unemployment uh, news, right? So you've got Spy going down. Okay, then you've got Q going up, and <clears throat> the reason that Tesla is choppy right now, it's because both of them are polar opposites right now. So you're just getting this choppy freaking pattern here. This is a total boring ass. Like you don't want to get stuck in a trade like this right now. Um, this is bad. Cause then you're in this like low volume grind mode and you're like, then you could sit there for two hours staring at this thing. And that's where you can have some, you know, problems. So Q is up. Spy is down. And that means Tesla is choppy. So again, <clears throat> I'm in at 658 here on Tesla where I, my target is 666. And now we're into this, like, I mean, this would be really a shame if, like, this is the highest you're going to get off of this movement. I mean, <clears throat> look at this movement down. Like, we should have had a nice bounce up here. So the problem is that if you start adding more right here, like, you know, like I added here, I'm not going to add any more Tesla stock here because then what happens if spy suddenly doom skips down, then I suddenly just lost. I get screwed. You don't want to get skipped on here, like skip down on a trade like this. So I'm not adding anything in this. <clears throat> hey man, I'm going to bounce. All right, brother. So I'll see you tomorrow. I'm going to work on show graphics, try to get those done this week. We're, we're just having some issues with some stuff, but uh, I think we'll get it figured out. Sweet, man. Catch you tomorrow morning. All right. Have fun trading. Goodbye, everybody. All right, man. Let's make some money, everyone. See you, make buddy. Make some money. Here, here's the thing. This is a good trade. The reason that this is a good trade is because this is a huge gap move. This is a huge gap move right here down, right? So So you know, I don't mind taking this trade at all. This is a huge gap gapper right here. So I filled right here.
So it is reclaiming a little bit, but look, this is a good trade, right? Like even if we only get to 663 as our high, I'm going to take it, you know, if I can get back up there. So, all right, all right. Tesla trying to move here. Can we get up to, again, my target is 666. I'll put this up on the screen here. Target. <clears throat> it's an ominous target number, isn't it? Oh, I spell it, right? Like if you, <clears throat> if you watch the tape on Tesla right now, I mean, it's, it wants to go, it wants to explode right now, but it can't because of spy. Look at spy. I mean, just keeps, just keeps crapping on it. Look at this. So this is the issue. I mean, look at this taking a dump. All right, all right, here we go, here we go, here we go. Okay, Tesla breaking out. Let me break out of this and sell. All right, 665 on a bounce, on a bounce, 665, 665. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Uh, wick back down. <clears throat> now Q is going down, so that could be a problem here. Q going down and spy down. No, now we could have a Tesla dump. Come on, come on, come on. Oh, here we go. Six, all right, come on. Let's see 666 is the target here we go here we go we're almost come on come on give me a nice little wick back here <clears throat> a little bounce back if it wants to get to my 666 i'm taking profits here and I'll keep a few um, arrows in the quiver. Uh, Otavio, you said you're short on uh, on Tesla. Your Imperial Majesty, great seeing you today. Right, here we go. Come on, get to six sixty six target. There we go. There we go. Uh, spy did it to us. Here we go. So, hey, I said earlier that this was the bounce opportunity we were looking for. I um, you know, actually put in a lower, put, put in a higher low on space. So this is what I was looking at for a an entry point. We got it here, though. Space, though, continues to... 665 here on Tesla. Come on. <coughs> if you're wondering why, if you're wondering why Tesla keeps doing this, this action right now, it's because of spy. And you've got, you've got this, I mean, look at these, these trusts, you know, I mean, look at this. You got Q's going down. You got spy going down. When these start tanking, it's very difficult to get Tesla 
to bounce higher. So that's why you're seeing this wick back right here. Let's see. <coughs> Sorry, my throat has been. So I sold a little bit here on at 665 just to lock in some profits. Uh, I sold a little bit of Tesla here at 665. Again, um, DJ Frank Nice says you're selling at 665. Good. Did you get some good profits on that, DJ? Again, to be clear, I'm not a financial advisor. I'm simply showing you what I do. So do your own due diligence on a stock. Uh, and I don't ever tell you what to trade. I'll tell you what I'm trading. And I really think, you know, you need to put in the time, the simulator, and learn about this stuff. Really spend the time learning. <clears throat> if you want to chat with us um, here, if you're watching live, uh, we have our members only chat. So you just have to be a member and you support our channel. And you can become a channel member by going to morninginvest.com slash join. All right, Tesla, come on. Give me something here. There we go, 666. <clears throat> there we go. All right, good. I'm all out. All right, not all out, 50% out. So I got profits. I, don't, I just don't trust this stock right now because of what's going on with SPY. You know, look... You know, if we wanted to get up to 673 area, like, you know, our next target. <clears throat> so that's, we didn't hit it. We did hit our target, which is good. And I did reduce my size. So I took out 50% profits there. Grover. Yeah, Grover's in the house somewhere. Oh, he's over on the chair. Grover's doing his own trading right now. <clears throat> so hovering, yeah. So made some really good profits on this right now. So Q, Q continues to go down. Spy continues to go down. And if these guys were going up, Tesla would be exploding right now. So this is like a little dead dead cat bounce right now. <clears throat> dead cat bounce on Tesla. Not much of a bounce here. Real weak. So in a perfect world, Spy and Q, if they are strong, Spy and Q, if they were strong and Tesla was having this huge dump gap fill opportunity right here, absolutely Tesla would have <clears throat> spiked up to 673. Boom. Huge profits. The reason it's not is because of Spy and uh, Q <clears throat> right now. Kristen Miller, good morning from Utah. Are you just joining us? <clears throat> Sorry, I'm losing my voice. All right, so I made about $12,000 profit on that trade. So I'm on Weeble, MRN. Uh, AC, you're in. Uh, so I'm on Weeble with MRI and what's next? <clears throat> I'd watch out for MRIN right now. Since the market opened, it's gotten real sketchy. Um, <clears throat> in my opinion, I'm not trading MRIN today. I'd be careful on that one. That's my opinion. Kristen, nice. You got to sleep in a little bit. Nice. 
Hey, Bill from Texas. Good to see you. New member. Good to see you. Look at Q. Look at Spy. So I got a couple of shares left here on Tesla. Let's see if we can get a higher low. Maybe pop up a little bit off this. Uh, <clears throat> So MRIN, you know, if you, uh, you end up getting dumped on uh, MRIN at the open, um, I, I would watch MRIN. I even took it off my chart for the day. I had it on my chart this morning in pre-market, but um, it's I think it's real sketch right now. I'd be careful on MRIN. Look at this movement. Look at this price action on MRIN. I mean, this is this is sketchy as as crap right now. I, I wouldn't be. So let's hope on Tesla here is about to pop. Ah, drop down again. <clears throat> so if you're just joining me, uh, I bought in at uh, six fifty eight on Tesla after this big dump this morning. So I bought in right here at this level. And the target, so I bought in a lot right here at this level at 658. And in a perfect world, I mean, because of how many people were trying to trade Tesla, this should have easily, easily, easily bounced to 673. We would have made really nice profits here. I mean, I would have made 50,000 50, in that trade. <clears throat> Instead, I made about 12,000 because it didn't bounce that high. And the reason it didn't bounce this high is because of these these ETFs that are trading that are down uh, with Tesla in them, right? An S and P 500 ETF trust, right? And Q, both of these were in the well. Q was up. Now Q dumped. Look at this, and Spy has been dumping for the last hour since market open. So because both of these have been sketchy, then Tesla has been hovered in this accumulation pattern right here unsure what to do so that's why we only got this new target of 666 instead of 673 up here <clears throat> so it just dumped um <clears throat> it would have been a nice short position here too <clears throat> i don't i'm not a big short player i i just i, I i'm a long biased investor All right. All right. We're hovering. We're over that 666 range now. <clears throat> we're getting some nice, we're getting some nice green candles here. So maybe we can get this. The volume is getting too low. That's the problem right now. So I, I don't know. It, this might not be a good play anymore. How many of you guys nailed that Tesla trade? You got out at 681. 
Jeff, you got it at 681. When did you get out then? Oh, you did a short. <clears throat> Linda, that's nice. You know, MRIN had some, you know, the thing is there weren't enough shorts. <clears throat> there weren't enough locates, and that's the issue. So there's been a nice, really nice couple of washout longs over the past few days on MRIN. I've made some good money on this. That's where I made my money. I was on some nice washout longs, but. Thank you, Jaime. My vacation was nice. Yeah, we went to uh, went to France for a week. Went to Disneyland Paris with the kids and did a day in Paris and just spent a, spent a bunch of time in uh, spent a bunch of time <clears throat> tooling around and enjoying uh, Disneyland Paris and Dis Disney Studios. And my son rode um, my uh, my 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 uh, son wanted to ride the hyperspace mountain the like twelve times. Uh, Adam, <clears throat> what does SPY and Q have to do with influence on Tesla? Great question. So these are trusts, right? So, and these are ETFs. And so when you, when you have those particular trusts dumping uh, and Q dumping, <clears throat> and then you realize like, like why Tesla is getting dumped on <clears throat> and having, so what happened earlier was Q was up. See, <clears throat> Sorry, I'm losing my voice, guys. So Q was up while SPY, these are, you know, again, these are trusts, was down, okay? So now they're, think about it, they're, they're competing with each other, right? So you've got one down, one up. Well, then that means that Tesla, as a, you know, benefactor of both of these trusts, is, is right in the middle. That's why you got this crappy price action here, like this choppy action here in the center right here. So it was like it couldn't make up its mind. It's like you're, it's like a, you know, Tesla was like a kid of a divorce, you know? <laughs> you can't, you got like one, you got one, uh, you got one parent pulling you in one direction, the other parent pulling you in another direction. So that's why Tesla had this like, sh you know, real crappy price action right now, you know? So, yeah, I'm glad I got, I'm all out of Tesla. I got out of Tesla right here at that, uh, at, at the 660, uh, 666 and a half range. So I'm all out of Tesla right now.
grab my other mug real quick. Be right back, guys. <clears throat> All right, guys. Sean says, am I a Robert Downey Jr. stuntman? <laughs> I've thought about that, uh, Jaime. I don't know about opening a Discord server again. Um, I've, I'm looking at it. Um, I've got our Telegram channel that I have, uh, Morning Invest Telegram channel. Um, <clears throat> Thayer's throat lozenges. I'll have to try that. Now, the reason I'm not staying in Tesla, you know, look, I, I day trade, guys. I mean, I, I, I swing trade some stocks that I'm holding long term, but uh, not this one. Um, you know, like, when I'm when I'm day trading a stock, you know, you can't get emotional about it and you've got to just know when to fold it basically. You 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 know that uh you know like that this basically is going to be like you know you you know that if it's going to go down the problem is a lot of new traders when they're just starting out they don't know when to get out. <clears throat> they get scared that, oh my God, I'm going to have to take a loss on this. But the problem is if you hang on because you think it's going to come back up, you're going to get screwed even more. So the problem is like, I know that if it, if it was coming back down to this range where I got in right, right roughly in that area and it, it's, it's going to, it could potentially dump big time way below that. <clears throat> So I knew that if this was coming back to 660 area, I was getting out of this because then it could really wick down real fast and really screw me over. Um, <clears throat> but, you know, I, since I'm day trading, I, I'm, you know, looking to make significant profits on this. The thing is, guys, you know, it's all relative. So, it, you know, if I'm trading a large sum of money, I trade $100,000, you know, or trading $50,000 at a time, you know, that's small money to somebody else who's doing million dollar trades at one point, right? And so for you to start out small, I would even suggest you, you go into Webull, sign up with Webull, get your free stocks using our link uh, to get it because they're, they have a promotion right now. If you go to morninginvest.com slash Webull, you'll get uh, one free stock just for opening the account and they're going to give you another stock once you make a $5 deposit in the account. And that stock they're going to give you is worth up to $2,000. But anyway, they're also allowing fractional shares. And inside of Webull, they have a simulator. This is why I'm telling you about Webull. Open up, go to Webull, get your account set up and just use the simulator along with me every day. You know, and then after three months or after a month or, you know, a few weeks even of just doing this regularly, you should really be at the point when you can start making some actual trades with actual money and becoming really profitable in a short amount of time. Turning, I'm talking about like turning $200 into $20,000 if you just stick with it in a short amount of time.
Beb says, I think your telegram has some unwanted visitors. What does that mean? <clears throat> you know, there's a couple of... Uh, on my Morning Invest uh, Telegram channel, there's no... Um, like it's just a broadcast channel for me to like push out like ideas and trades and th stocks that I'm looking at. But um, there have been some imposter accounts set up. So my account on Insta on Telegram is literally Morning Invest, just Morning Invest, not it's spelled wrong or anything. It's Morning Invest is my Telegram channel. All right, so we're watching Tesla here. Tesla, again, grinding. Look, this is when there's no volume in Tesla. I'm glad I'm out of Tesla right now. So. So among the other things that we're looking at here, you know, the thing is just like volume dies down. <clears throat> you see this volume dropping. <clears throat> Look, I don't trade anything unless it's got over 200,000 in volume. So if you see here on my page here on, on, um, on trading view, <clears throat> I, I don't want to be in any stock where at least we got 200,000 in volume. <clears throat> Otherwise, there's just not enough liquidity there for it to make any sense. Yeah, Tesla at this point, no, I'm not going to sit around and watch for that grind. If you were looking in on AMC earlier today, AMC, we had this big pop at the open. Uh, really had this like panic pop open and then a huge sell off. <clears throat> and now we're in this grind territory with AMC also. <clears throat> and this is not, I mean, kind of bouncing off. It's putting in a higher, a higher low slightly. Like if you want to play around with some some stuff at smaller numbers, you can see here just some some higher higher lows. Slowly coming back. But this is the kind of stuff where you just don't have the volume and you're just sitting here hoping that this is gonna bounce. And this is where you get trapped in these little grind zones. Uh just kind of garbage grind zones. And you could sit here all day with this. Like, who wants to be in a trade where, you know, it's looking like this all day? <laughs> like a sea monster. Stay away from sea monster trades. So space, space. <clears throat> Had a really nice... So, you know, space keeps bouncing off this... To me, this is another good entry point. If we can get another wick back on space, this would be a good entry, in my opinion, or I would probably jump in. So there's, here's one I'm watching more closely now is space. If we can get SPCE space, <clears throat> to wick back down here, off of this level again <clears throat> that's in my opinion a good entry because and it gives us at least some movement between 47 and 49 it's not a lot it's not a lot of room to play with you're really only talking about uh if you look at you're really only talking about a uh, three three percent or so Differential here. 
not bad, but it's not great either. <clears throat> so doing these like $2 trades, you know, uh, most and frozen. What is harder to trade crypto or the stock market? That's a great question. Um, day trading. <clears throat> Day trading, I think, is much easier in the stock market. Um, crypto, there's just, when you don't have market closes with crypto, you know, for me, I, I look, I, 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 for me with crypto, I, I look for entry points that are going to be longer term holds for me. Um, day trading the stock market, where I don't give a rat's behind about the company um, at all. I don't because I'm just day trading off of these Wall Street companies and I'm making profits in a short amount of time and I'm out of the stock before the end of the bell at the end of the day. <clears throat> uh, with, with crypto, a lot of the coins that I'm buying are long-term holds for me because the upside is huge. So for like Cardano, for instance, or Bitcoin or Ethereum, Polkadex, uh, some of the ones that have really interesting and really strong platforms, and they're doing some really fantastic stuff. You know, I, I'm I'm big and long on those, um, on those coins. I just don't day trade uh, um, crypto. You know, I'm sure, you know, the the fundamentals are going to be the same. The the, the you know the, um, the the same things are in play. The same things are in play. On whether you're in crypto or whether you're in the markets, right? You're still looking at volume. I'm still looking at price action. Um, I'm still looking at all of those things. I'm still paying attention to all of those things. And so if you're not, <clears throat> the markets still apply. You're still, and you, the thing is with, with Bitcoin, with, with crypto, you're just not seeing a lot of, as much of the large sort of institutional uh, big firms right now that have manipulated it as much as we've seen the manipulation in the stock market. And when I say that, I mean, the manipulation is greater in crypto because it's a young, small market still, to be honest, compared to the stock market, um, compared to the, the you know, multi-trillions that are in the stock market. So the reason the Dow doesn't move that much and just a, you know, a little bit of a percent here and there, not very much when you've got some major movement and yet Bitcoin can take a, you know, $5,000 price swing with some basic market manipulation FUD. It's because it's a much smaller market. So the volatility is there. You can make a lot of money, but you'd also get your ass handed to you <laughs> in crypto. <clears throat> Myra says AMC has been in the same spot for weeks. I wonder if the squeeze is going to happen. <clears throat> I, you know, I, I don't think so. I mean, you have to understand these institutions got their hats handed to them with GameStop. I don't think they're going to let it happen again. I think the real story here is that uh, there's just not the power on the retail side f from, a, you know, quote unquote, ape nation. To, to go after these guys. I think they've really dialed in their algorithms. You, I've been watching this. I mean, you're seeing like literally at, at the half dollar mark, they're just, they've been moving on, on AMC like this for the past few weeks. They've really tightened up their algorithms. And so it's risky to try to trade against institutions. Like, you know, you can't, you cannot. If you're a little guy, you don't have millions of dollars of liquidity to work with to, you know, that's how these guys win. They have endless bank accounts and they can do these minute by minute, second by second, uh, you know, 10 cent manipulations in the market with their algorithms. And I just don't, I just, you can't beat them. I mean, you really, you can try, good luck. I'd much rather be where the other retail traders are going and you, you have to, you, you, you can swim with the trades in the right way when you can tell that they're not being scammy and they're not being shorted uh, in this way, <clears throat> they're not being um, 
they're not being screwed with in this way. So, see, so you have volume. I mean, look at now we're just in this choppy territory right now where it's just <clears throat> on space, like, you know, looking at space right now. Just grinding it, folks. Grinding, grinding, grinding. Grinding along. I'm sorry, again, I don't know if it's allergies or something, but when we went to France last week, I um, I think just like maybe some of the different pollen or something got to me. And then at night, just like with the air conditioning on, I don't usually, we don't usually have air conditioning here. Jan says, look at the shareholders who refuse the new share emission. Yeah, well, the power's in the hands of the apes. I, I think, you, look, yes, I think you're right in that way. Absolutely. And what you're referring to is what we saw earlier today from Adam Aaron, the CEO. Was this tweet from Adam Aaron? It's no secret. I think shareholders should authorize 25 million more AMC shares. But... What you think is important to us. Many yeses, many noes. AMC does not want to proceed with such a split. So we're canceling the July vote on more shares and no more such requests in 2021. And that's why we saw this big pop at the open this morning. As the market opened, we saw this big pop right here, right as the market opened. <clears throat> And now we're just getting this grind. We're just getting the sea serpent. Sea serpent. That's what I'm going to start calling it. <laughs> like Nessie. Does it look like Nessie? Where are we with space? Yeah, nothing. <clears throat> you're in this channel now. Like, look at this. You know, you're in this price channel now where it's, yeah, it's just grind, grind time. You're almost at the, <clears throat> you know, we're almost at the uh, nap, trading nap time, trader nap time. Dead cat caterpillar. <laughs> what is it called? Just thro throat spray? Saving Grace throat spray. Alcohol free organic. Tastes nasty. Yeah, my wife gives me the. Uh, <clears throat> oregano drops, but she she didn't give it to me this morning. Yeah, see, this is the time of the day when we just get into this grind time. <clears throat> Grind time. M R I N is just, it's not dying. <laughs> Don't go dying on me. <clears throat> M R I N is not dying. Could be an entry point here on M R I N. But again, it's been super sketchy.
<clears throat> yeah, many of you were asking it. So I was watching pre-market MRIN, but uh... yeah, Robert, this is the live trading portion of the show. So the first half an hour of the show, you can get the straight news. If you want to go back and rewatch the beginning of the, uh, the stream, you can do that. How many of you are subscribers to the channel, by the way? How many of you are new? I'd love to see how many of you are new to the channel. I'm just fresh back from my... Uh, from my vacation. BSQR is looking for a, <clears throat> could be about to break out here. It's looking for a high. Come on, let's go on for a higher high here. So BSQR. Darius, thank you for your super chat. It says, uh, where do you purchase gold and silver? I like, um, I like uh, Birch Gold is where I do it. You can check them out. We actually, they have a free gold kit that you can try. <clears throat> if you go to morninginvest.com slash gold, let me put that up on the screen if I can find it here. Yeah, if you can't if you can't use Weeble and you know try one of the larger <clears throat> try one of the other exchanges, you know. Shola, thank you. It says I really like this new format. You can't use Weeble in Texas, really, Krista? Can you use um, public in Texas? Yes, I am, Celine. <clears throat> Hi, huh, buddy. Come on, buddy. Where are you going? Grover's going up the other chair. Where are you going, buddy? <clears throat> Grover the trading dog. So, BSQR. The slow grind here, grinding up. <clears throat> I don't like to be stuck in these kinds of trades. I mean, look, if you bought in down here, okay, uh, you know, good on you. But come to hang out. That's my one year old. <clears throat> His name is Grover. If you're new to the show, my one year old mini pincher.
So yeah, if you got in here on B BSQR, uh, let's see here. Now we're having this now dump off here. Uh, see if it bounces off this level here <clears throat> or continues down. Testing that area, but Tesla might be about to give you a re-entry zone below 660. <clears throat> Check Tesla here. So So this is where I bought in Tesla earlier today at 658. Rode this little crazy nugget up to 666 sold out of everything at 666 50 right here and on that I made a 12k profit on that trade <clears throat> and now the grind grind back down grind back up so if we can get back to a 660 entry somewhere right around here in my opinion because we have support here <clears throat> but we also have support and resistance here so no. so we'll put in a higher low so these are all these are all signs of a coming breakout so a higher low higher you know Sorry, a lower, a higher low. I, man, I'm out of it today. <laughs> Go. And then, you know, again, we had a target at 670. 673. 673. We had a target, obviously, earlier at 666. So if we can get back to the 666 level, take some small profits here to here. Not much, though. But these are grinder these are grinders right now guys <clears throat> thank you uh, Ahmed from Bahrain good to see you uh Adam I'm not uh, I don't know that Adam Grind time. <clears throat> yeah, so I'm going to read off, like, if anybody's new here and subscribes to the channel. Uh, see, SRD Jean is new. Nice to see you. Uh, 
do that in a second. A good question here. Uh, Elon G wants to know on BSQR, what would I, uh, is it BSQR you're asking about? BSQR, yes, yeah. A limit on which to sell it. Well, it just depends on where I buy it, right? So if we look at this chart right now, um, to me, this is not, uh, like I'm not buying right now. <clears throat> but let me give you an example of where I would buy. Um, so we had the market open and then see, here's the thing you want to, I always want to wait at the market open. Here is the, see this, uh, brown line right here. That was pre-market. Okay. So you can see this brown on your screen here is pre pre-market right here. And then this was open, right? So here's nine thirty Eastern bell. <clears throat> and I want to look back pre-market highs, okay, pre-market highs, pre-market low, okay, so these are my ranges, like I want to see what's going on here, so this is, is pre-market, so then as the market opens, <coughs> excuse me, again, I'm feeling really under the weather, <coughs> actually, that was not pre-market high, pre-market high was up here up here <coughs> so anyway I'm looking at those indicators first then I'm also looking at where what the last year has looked like for this stock those will always outweigh pre-market high and pre-market low what's been the the What's been the high for the last year on this stock? Because things will always bounce off of that line. Then I also want to look at the VWAP, which is the volume weighted average price. So I want to see what the VWAP is once, once we get some stocks in play for the day. The volume weighted average. But to simply answer your question, okay, so at open on B, B, uh, BSQR, I'm waiting till this opens to get confirmation of what's happening here. So <clears throat> I see that this thing is going down. Why in the world would I buy into it right here? It'd be crazy. So I want to wait and see confirmation of what's actually happening. And I'm watching the tape to see are there long, you know, are we seeing shorts being squeezed out? <clears throat> I mean, are we seeing longs being squeezed out? Are we seeing longs coming in where is that in where is that volume coming from you know who <clears throat> how much uh, you know how much of a first of all how much of a float of the stock are we seeing and how quickly is it being recycled and in which direction so if i start to see it being recycled quite a bit that that's a really strong indicator for me that it, this is that it's going up so at at the open I see this opportunity. I get two confirmed breakout points here. <clears throat> I buy in, right? I get a little wick back here. But now if I'm in at this level, I want to basically set my, my I want to get out of it. Let me delete these. If I get in here, I want to get out. I want to set my most previous, previous resistance level right there. Previous, like, to me, that's where I would be setting a stop loss to get out. <clears throat> so I got in it here, right? I'd set my stop loss under the previous resistance and support right here. <clears throat> and then this will probably be in play throughout the day, this resistance and support level. You know, you could imagine later in the day, like we get another wick back, it comes back, it'll probably bounce off that line and then bounce back up. Just how these things work. So now I'm in this trade. I'd ride this all the way up. <clears throat> and you notice anything about that? Is that this was one of the, you know, this was the most recent, one of the more recent highs. It's still not the highest of the day in the pre-market. You know, this is going up and up and up close to the high of the pre-market all the way up here.
So you'd be crazy to buy in right here. Because now you're at the top. Where, and if the pre-market high was right here, how much, you don't have any room to go, right? Like if the pre-market high was here and over here in the pre-market and you buy in right here, then you have like no room to profit. So the only thing that's going to happen to you is you're going to get dumped on. <clears throat> in my opinion. <coughs> so I want to wait for another entry point which would have been right around here. So we get this support level here and I'd wait for this thing to come back down to about here before I buy in. Now, if you buy in here, after all of the fun opening of the bell for the first hour, see, this is why we wanna trade early because you get this and volume and liquidity. Then later towards 11 a.m. Eastern, you get this crap. No movement, no price action. Right. And then maybe after lunchtime, you get some crazy institutional garbage going on. So you just got to be careful. That's why most of the money is made at the open and a little bit at the close. But really, the open is where it's at for me and all day traders. And you'll find that most of the day traders will sort of be done and they'll go off and enjoy the rest of their day after this. <clears throat> so I hope that makes sense. Did I answer your question? I hope I explained that. Um, I forgot who asked the question. <laughs> Jerry wants to know what the crypto play is. Let's look at some of the crypto plays right now. <clears throat> Let's look at Bitcoin. Bitcoin has been stalling out around this 33,000 range. <clears throat> it was at 34 earlier today during my show at the beginning. Um, it's, you know, it keeps bouncing around this 33. It's possible we head back down to to the 26, 28 range. But what I'm seeing right now from Bitcoin is a lot of whales are buying in right now. So a lot of whales are buying in. And when you have a lot of big, big guys buying in, I'm talking like really big guys buying in long positions right now. Meaning they, when I say long and short, how many of you in the chat know what I'm talking about? Just say yes or no. I just want to get a sense. When I say a long position, say yes, you know what that is, or just say no. There's no dumb, there's no dumb questions. You know, I like to ask questions as if I'm a five-year-old because that's how you learn, right? There's no such thing as a dumb question. Um, so Little Bird says no. Frederick Sewell says no. Tina Tina says no. Okay, a lot of yeses, but a lot of people saying no. Art Sullivan says no. Kristen says yes, that's good. William says no. David says no. Ivan says no. New Bay says no. Belinda says, I think I know. S. Sidhu says no, please explain. Bethany says no, please explain. Okay. So let me just show you here on a chart. I'll just use Bitcoin chart here as an example. And I'll take this full screen so you can see a little bit better here. <clears throat> so I need my brushes though. So I can't do that. Okay, so let's say, and I personally, I personally am what's known as long biased, meaning I like to invest not invest. I like to trade a stock long. I'm just more comfortable that way because what it means is I buy a stock at a certain price. Let's say I buy it for a dollar with the idea that it's going to hit a dollar fifty. And I'm buying it in a long position that it's going to go up in value. Now, some people hold long positions for a year, six months, for decades. I have long positions in certain companies that are in sort of my long-term hold portfolio. And a long position just means long-term hold. But as a day trader, long means I'm long in that stock, hoping it's going up in value. Okay. I'm long in a stock. Simply means it's going up in value, up the staircase. Okay. 
It's a long, just think of it this way as like a mnemonic, right? It's a long, and that's not a mnemonic, but, um, but like, <clears throat> like I always think of Ghostbusters at the end scene when they're trying to climb the stairs, the elevators are out and they're trying to go up to the top to meet Zool and the Stay Puft Marshmallow Man. And they've got to go up the stairs, you know, that's a long way up, right? Think of it going up, long way up. That's a long position. In a day trader situation, and a day trader simply is someone like what I do with what I'm doing here on the show, which is I'm only trading from the market open until the market close. And I'm not in a stock past that time. I sell before the end of the day. I do not want to hold that stock overnight in a day trade because then that goes from being a day trader to a swing, to a swing trader. And that's a totally different strategy. Totally different strategy. Grover here's a trash truck. What are you barking at, buddy? It's just a trash truck, man. Just a trash truck. Do you do your you got him? You got him figured out? Go back and lay down by my feet. Okay. Okay, you're all good. He barked at the trash truck <clears throat> and he's back. Okay. So we have a long position, which is you intend to buy it at a cheaper price and sell it at a higher price. Using this chart, I'll show you an example. Bitcoin, just had a huge pop actually here. Look at this, Bitcoin surging right now. So if I bought, <clears throat> I would have looked at this Bitcoin chart and saw that this nice decline has been bouncing off this like previous resistance lines pretty much over the past few days and hours. And I would say to myself, this looks like a good entry point on Bitcoin. I'm going to buy in at a long position on Bitcoin right now. Meaning, this is a long play for me. I just bought it here at $33,900. I think it's going up in value. And what is the target? The target is here at the previous high, right? Here's the previous high. And that's exactly what's probably going to happen here. Let's watch it. Let's watch Bitcoin, okay? <clears throat> these patterns repeat themselves constantly. It's all about math. That's all it is. And emotion. The markets are emotional. Oh, it's going back down. But it, this is just a little wick back. It'll probably bounce back up. It'll probably bounce off this level right here. Okay. This is a long position going up in value. Now, if I want to short a stock... I'm going to do a, a something different, which is, let me go back to a chart, which is an example. Let's go back to a good short stock would have been <clears throat> Tesla today. So let me get rid of all this stuff here. Let's go back to the market open on Tesla. Okay. So Here's the market open on Tesla. So you can see here, guys, this, this brown area is pre-market. That's like 6 in the morning, 7 in the morning, you know, up to the market open. <clears throat> and this is why you always want to have a stock show its hand. Let me do, uh, let me do a one hour because this is too crazy. No, let me do Sorry, guys. Sorry, sorry. I'm going to change the <clears throat> perspective on this real quick. What am I doing here? Oh, that's one month. That's why. Like, why does it look all funky? All right. Option R to reset. I always forget that. Okay. So guys, here's Tesla. This is an example of a short, what happened today on this stock. Now at the market open, notice we had this green candle. So if you were a, a, a newbie, a rookie, and you got your money ready, you got your charts ready, and right as the market opens at 930, you see Tesla starting to take off. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> that's what these 
That's what short position investors are hoping you will do. Okay. You know, they're hoping that you're, you know, we get a little volume here and a little pop and that you're going to jump into this in a long, like they want you to suddenly jump into this as a long position, right? They want you as a newbie to think that this is going up. So you jump in, you jump in and you invest your money, your hard earned money, right? And you think the Tesla is going to go up. So you, cause you see that green candle and you see volume and you see people buying and you're like, ah. that's why I always want a stock at the market open to show its hand, show its hand to me. What is it doing? What's happening? Well, if you let, this is one minute. I, I want to give it a few minutes. I want to see what's happening. It's going down. Right now I see it's clearly going down. It's dumping big time. So Tesla took a huge dump. Like I'm talking a 20 point dump. I'm not a short stock investor. I just don't like to do it. I'm just not a fan of it. To invest short in a stock, you're basically buying. You're buying stocks from a broker or you're, excuse me, you're borrowing stocks from a broker at a certain price. And the broker is having locates, which is trying to locate people to be able to actually give you that position. So then what happens is if you have a short, the idea is that you're shorting the stock. You think that it's actually going to go down in value so that you can sell it back to the broker and make a great profit. And that's what you do. So you would actually take a short position here. You would set your target somewhere. You think, okay, I'm, gonna, I'm hoping it's going to reach down here right? And this is the GameStop story. This is how those large institutions believed and, and thought that GameStop was going to have, was, was going to plummet in value. So they took a short position in the stock, borrowing the stock at a more expensive price with the idea that they're going to sell it back at a much cheaper price later and make the difference in the, in, in, from here to here, they'll make that profit, right? So this morning, the shorts did really well. Like if you shorted Tesla this morning here with a target, you know, you, you rode that all the way down, <clears throat> you would have made bank. So what did I do? I bought in at the bottom, okay, and I rode it up to about here. I took a long position here and made that in profit. I would have made a lot more if I had a short position. But the problem is brokerages are only going to let you get away with it for so long because they're going to want their money. And you better have the money on hand to be able to cover that position if you screw up. So what happens if you took a short position when this market opened today and you thought that Tesla was going to dump? So you, you contacted your broker, you took a short position right here, and then it suddenly took off. You got crushed. And now that broker wants their money to cover that. That's what happened with GameStop. The whole GameStop story is that everyone in the Reddit forums said, screw you, Wall Street. You think that this stock is going down? Guess what? We're going to buy into it and it exploded. And then all of these big institutional Wall Street guys had to cover their shorts. They had to pay their, they had to cover. They had to cover that difference. It come out of pocket billions of dollars to cover that position. So I just, I'm, I'm not a fan of shorting in general. I just, I, I, I don't, I, I'm much more long bias. It, it also, to me, it, it, it's just easier, especially in the beginning, if you're just getting started. Shorting can be very dangerous if you don't know what you're doing. I mean, but also buying long can be very dangerous if you don't know what you're doing. Uh, let me know in the chat. Does that make sense, everyone? Did I make sense? Sorry again. I'm I'm losing my voice today. I um. I hope uh, hope I'm making sense here. Uh, I sound like Greg Kinnear. Really, I love Greg Kinnear. What has he been doing lately? We just watched it as good as it gets. Not too long ago, David says, uh, do you realize you sound exactly like Greg Kinnear? <laughs> no, I didn't realize that. But I also am a little sick today. <clears throat> um, 
This is a Shure. This is one of the best mic microphones you can buy. Um, you'll see it used in a lot of uh, audio production. A lot of singers use this microphone. It's the same microphone that uh, Joe Rogan, Joe Rogan uses. Um, it's the Shure SMB, Shure SM7B, and it's a. It, it uses a um, with the Go XLR into. It's an XLR microphone into an interface that I use. FFMGF. Let's check that one. Someone's asking about FFMGF. 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 First mining gold. So first mining gold. Like I'm very big on these gold producers. First mining gold. Um, I'm big on uh, Blue Lagoon resources. These guys because there is incredible demand for silver, copper, gold. And these gold producers that are tapping into these mines with incredible upside right now, um, that's, you know, you can make a lot of money, not necessarily just buying the gold, which I do, but in investing in the gold producers. Again, it depends on what type of trader you want to be. Do you want to be a day trader? Like I'm a day trader, so I make quick profits in one day. But I ask, I'm also a swing trader, which means that I hold stocks for a long time. So those are, that's a two different strategies. Like Apple, I'm not going to day trade Apple unless there's some big catalyst news or some big something that happens. But there's no way you're going to be able to compete with like big institutions on with Apple. It's not going to happen. Um, and Google and those types of big mar mega cap stocks. So those are the types of stocks that I hold long term. You know, Ford, Apple, I have those stocks in a bag of long term buy and hold stocks. So it depends on what type of trader you want to be. You know, First Mining Gold is an OTC stock. It's a small market cap stock. And so at 39 cents a share, low volume, high volatility because, you know, things can move like look look at this. I mean, look at it surging here. You get like, are plunging here, right? You get like, you get some big news. They open a new mine. These things can surge. You can make a ton of money. Like, look at this surge right here on, on back on uh, June 21st, right? First mining gold. Huge, huge news that they had on opening a new gold mine, I think, right? So look at this. Boom. Look at that. 37, you know, huge, huge move. And another huge move. So you just got to pay attention to the news on some of these OTC stocks. Um, sorry, guys. Uh, they are over-the-counter stocks. That's what OTC stands for. They're smaller cap. You need to trade those on exchanges like E-Trade or a TD Ameritrade, et cetera. But I love some of these OTC stocks. I mean, I'm in a couple you know, different rooms where we talk about OTC stocks because these gold producers particularly, silver producers, copper producers, um, you know, Excellent. Blue Lagoon. Let's look at Blue Lagoon. You know, the thing is, I made a lot of money on Blue on Blue Lagoon. B-L-A-G-F. And by the way, check out the video I just did on them. So again, you see like not a lot of volume, but look at this. You know, at, at like half of their share price right now. Um, so look at this from up here. Okay. Look where we are on this stock. They just, they have some major news that I just featured in a video. If you want to check it out, you should, because as this new mine comes on board, again, this is another OTC stock. Do your due diligence on them. Do your research on them. Blue Lagoon, B-L-A-G-F. They, um, the, the money that they're pulling out of this dome mountain mine project right now, the gold that they're pulling out of there, and that's why it's going up. Look, because you got this news. And so where do you think this is going to go? Do you think it's going to head back to 58, 59, 60 cents a share? I do, personally. But you also have to know when to leave a stock as well, right? So... 
Study a stock, study its news. If you want to be in it long term, great. Maybe you want to invest a good amount of money in it now and then sell it when it reaches close to the high, right? Maybe that's a long term play for you. Set your targets. And maybe this happens in three months. Maybe this happens at the end of July, this rise on BLG, BLAGF. This is a good one to check out. Again, this is an OTC stock. So you need to trade this on like E-Trade. That's where I trade my OTC stocks. You can't use Webull. You can't use Robinhood. You can't use uh, Public, the, salt, the smaller exchanges. You need to use one of the big boys like Fidelity or TD Ameritrade to trade uh, some of these. Anyway, my point is set your target. You know, If I buy into this stock, set a limit. I want to sell it. Maybe I want to sell it. If it's getting close to this high, do you think it's going to go higher than the high? Maybe. Do you think it goes up here? Could. Very well could. Right? Maybe you want to stay in it personally. You maybe want to, like, personally, I would want to, you know, set it here so that I'm in it till it gets close to the high and I sell or I take profits. Or maybe as it's going up, I take 50% profits here and I hold another 50% and I sell the remaining 50% here. So the, there are all kinds of options that you can do with a trade like this. Um, to me, there's not, you can't date, in my opinion, in my opinion, there's not enough volume to day trade a stock like this. There will be people that will disagree with me. I just don't think you can day trade a stock like this. <clears throat> like where you're going to get in and get out in the same day. <clears throat> Unless there's some big news, some big catalyst, something, Right. They just get bought by Amazon or I, I don't know, <laughs> some kind of big, big, huge earth shattering news, right? Um, but for the most part, this is not like a day tradable. Eh, I guess, again, people can argue that. But I would say, okay, this is like a, a medium term hold for me. So you buy in here. Well, and then I set an out at this point at close to 60 cents or maybe at right around 60 cents at this high point here. B-L-A-G-F. And, you know, put a hundred bucks into it. It's only 50, it's right, 50 cents a share right now. So, you know, it's not Tesla. Tesla's $662 a share. So Tesla's continuing to grind here. Jason Frank, yeah, cold storage. Most of the people I know are storing their crypto in a protected cold wallet like Ledger. Let me go grab my Ledger. I'll show you what a cold wallet storage looks like. So <clears throat> this is a, what's known as a ledger. This is the, probably the best. Um, the Ledger Nano S cryptocurrency hardware wallet. I mean, in many, you know, it looks like a thumb drive, right? That's being kept in cold storage, meaning it's not, it's not on an exchange. So it can't be hacked, right? I mean, it could be hacked if someone gets it and, and steals it from you and knows your password, <laughs> right? But that way it's, it's encrypted. It's yours. You can put it in a safe somewhere in your house or in a safety deposit box or wherever you feel like, you know, that you feel it would be safe. But that way your cryptocurrencies are in cold storage. That's what cold storage means. That's what cold storage means. Um, when you have your money like on Binance or KuCoin or or Bybit or Coinbase or any of those exchanges, some of them, even like BlockFi and others, will move them into cold storage, a portion of it, so it's being rotated into cold storage. But for the most part, you're on that exchange, and yes, they can be hacked. Uh, Rose wants to know, where can you see the volume of a stock? Good question. So a volume of a stock, it depends on what platform you're using. You can look at different volume metrics. You can even add them right to your, like, so here I am on TradingView. So on TradingView, I can add different indicators, okay? I can go up here and I can put volume so that it pops up on the bottom of my screen. 
down here. And then I can see the volume that's coming in on a stock based on, <clears throat> uh, you can see that these graphs here, right? So, uh, and I can see at the bottom of my screen here, do you see all of these candles now? You can see how in the morning, this volume here was much higher. See, all, this is the volume down here, right? So you see all this volume in the, in the morning. And you can see the afternoon when all the traders go to sleep, they take a nap. The volume declines. So let me just go over to, let's like look at MRN right now. MRN, like very low volume, you know, again, down. Let's look at BLIN, low volume right now. So, you know, you want to be, if there's low volume, you, you just want to stay away from it. That means there's just not a lot of liquidity and then you're stuck in a trade where you can't get out of it because it's just choppy as hell. And it just goes back and forth a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, no price action at all. And that's what happens as the market, you know, um, you know, here's AMC. See, you can see this pop here, right? You see volume coming back in like a big middle finger. And we saw volume and then you see it reflected in the price action up above. See on AMC. So, and you can also, I also have some different things set, but you can add those in your indicators tab. If you're on trading view, whoop. sorry, you can go into your indicators and I have them set for my favorite indicators, like RSI, VWAP and so forth. David Z says, solid state drives go out. What makes me think something will happen to the ledger just sitting there? Electro. Uh, yeah, I know. Well, Jason says, once in cold storage and token amount changes, what happens? Well, you still own that particular coin at that dollar amount. It doesn't really matter if it's in you just can't trade it at that moment. Brian, I would say that he's asking about Blue Lagoon. Would you say that this is a long-term play? In my opinion, um, and again, I can't tell you what to do uh, or what to trade. Um, let's go back to uh, save that Tuesday's trades. B-L-A-G-F. B-L-A-G-F. So to me, this is a great trade. To me, this is a long-term trade. You can see, you know, like some heavy volume this morning at the open. But to me, this is a, a long-term trade. And I say, well, medium term. Let me just say medium term. Um, in my opinion, <clears throat> in my humble opinion, so again, where do we have previous highs? And even if we wanted to look at this support level here, because this is like a, a, I don't trust this, but even here, right? So even if I buy in right here and I say, okay, I'll set a stop loss for here. And I'm going to set a target that when it hits here, I'm going to sell or it gets close to that. So I set in my app, you know, if I'm using E-Trade e or whatever, I set a stop. I set a, uh, I set a, a, a sell, a sell limit so that when it hits certain targets, I can sell 50%, 25%. And you can do that in these, di in these different trading platforms. You know, you can sell a certain percentage as you ladder up when it reaches this target. In my opinion. This is the Nano S, someone's asking. Nano S. Really is the best, in my opinion. Jason says he bought into Blue Lagoon. I too believe this could be a great buy. 
yeah, again, do, do your own due diligence, do your own reading on it. Again, look at the recent news on this and, uh, and go from there. I'll be right back guys. I got a, um, a doorbell ringing here. I'll be right back.
Apologize, everyone. Our, um... My relatives are visiting us, and uh, they lost my, my brother-in-law's suitcase upon his arrival yesterday. The airline did. So they just were delivering the suitcase to the house. So that's where I had to... And they're not here right now. They're out exploring and with Natalie. So I had to run down and grab the suitcase and sign for it. So I apologize for that. So it looks like... Um, we got our new entry point on Tesla while I was gone. So this... Uh, I'm going to I'm going to buy into Tesla again right now. See if I can make another $12,000 or more. Remember that our price target is 666. It's hit it a couple of times. Right? It's hit it here. It's hit it here and got a little of it actually 667, right? So remember I bought it here before. And it went to here and I sold it. Guess what? We had a little bit of a retest, a higher low, higher low. It's coming back down. Now we're here at hit. It bounced off this point again. Now we just got to get, I, I like to get some confirmation that it's moving in that direction. I'm just going to set a stop loss slightly under that. So I don't lose very much money. You know, I, I mean, 2% really, it should be like 2%. That's about it. I don't want to be anything more than that. Now, where is it going to go? Where's Tesla going to go from here? Or here, let's see. But if history is a lesson, just don't see, I mean, you know, pre-market, you know, I mean, we're nowhere near, I mean, pre-market low, it's 670, 674, pre-market low, pre-market high, 683. I mean, to me, this is a perfect entry point on Tesla right now. Perfect. All right, so let's see what happens here, folks. Let's see what happens here with Tesla. All right. So, and we're getting the nice volume. So you see this volume coming in here on Tesla? So we're getting some green volume here. Average volume is 24 million.
Sorry that I'm so sick. I feel like just, I feel like crap. <clears throat> I'm not my usual chipper self. All right, so how many of you guys are pulling the trigger on Tesla right now? Just curious where you guys where you guys are on this. Darius, yeah, that's right, exactly. You know, among the things I'm always, I'm looking for too, is <clears throat> I want to make sure that if I look at the stocks that, uh, you know, have a, a nice, nice percentage change over 2%, um, the last price is at least over $10 um, and less than $100 usually um, that I don't always stick to that rule for me, but uh, sometimes I do. Um It looks like I have a meeting starting in five minutes and the volume has to be over 200,000. So let's, you know, looking at new egg right now, that meets that criteria for me. <clears throat> 569. Of course the volume is probably stalled out right now on new egg. That was one I was watching pretty closely today. Yeah, it's just choppy right now, but you know, this is another one uh, that's been pretty good. Well guys, I'm, I'm going to make this trade here on uh, on Tesla right now. And again, I've got a, a target set for, I mean, really, it could ride up to 662. But again, I have a target at 667. Um, I'll get this wick down here. I'm glad I didn't buy just yet. So we could even get a bigger dump. I'm waiting for a better entry point here. Can you actually get a better entry point here? A nice bounce off of this, sort of wick back off of this 66, 656. We could see a nice, <clears throat> nice bounce up here. Let's see what the volume is. Wow. This is definitely oversold, though. You see the RSI? <clears throat> so here we go. We get a nice green. See this RSI indicator down here? That means that it's oversold well below that 20%. And you're starting to see that green. So 
So I'm picking up some at uh, So I just bought Tesla at 657. That's our um that's the lowest point of the day right there. To me that's a great entry point. Just managed to buy it at the lowest point of the day. <clears throat> and that becomes our new resistance point. So, you know, look, if it breaks 657, dumps below that, then, you know, then, then, then that's where I'm selling. But right now, sky's the limit on where this could go in the next few minutes. I got to jump off here, guys. I got a meeting starting. Um, no, I'm not using leverage, Floria. Thank you for the question. Thanks to all of you that are new. Um, if you guys are new, please subscribe to the channel. We do our daily live show from Monday through Friday at 9 a.m. Eastern time where we cover the news for the first half hour before the market opens. So that's the, the format that I'm trying out for the summer. Um, for those of you that are new, I've, I've been a news anchor for 20 years of my life and, and as an investor and entrepreneur, I started investing in real estate a number of years ago, um, started buying and selling properties wholesaling properties, investing in properties. And now I've done th thousands of real estate deals. That's how I made my wealth. Then I started investing in crypto and day trading as well. So all facets uh, of investing. Um, and so I use those small term, those small time profits or small term profits from, from day trading and crypto and converting those into buy and hold real estate which I believe is the number one way to build wealth and preserve wealth because of the way that the tax structure is in the United States. So that's been my overall strategy. I try to te you know, cover the markets, make sure that you're on the right side of these things, not being ripped off by Wall Street. And we do our show live every day at 9 a.m. Eastern time. So if you're new here, please hit that subscribe button. If I brought you any value at all, maybe uh, smash that like button. And I've run out of my voice. Um, this has been a, uh, a fun few hours, guys. I love, I hope you guys enjoyed this and I hope I was able to bring you uh, some value. <clears throat> Thank you guys. Um, hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Thanks everyone.